In this tutorial, we're going to use OCI FreeTier to set up an Oracle Linux compute instance. We're going to install Node Express, and we're going to access that app from the internet. And essentially what we do here is, you can see the cloud infrastructure right here, right? We're going to create a compute instance, we're going to create a VCN, and then we're going to create some rules to make sure that what's going in and out here, of course, is copacetic. We're going to install Node Express. And we're going to go ahead and skip through the part where you start for free and you sign up for your Oracle Cloud infrastructure. We've got some tutorials on that already, and those are pretty basic. So we're going to go ahead and first make sure that we've got our account and we're going to use, I'm using a Mac right now, we're going to use SSH to get in that way. So the first thing we're going to do is create a compartment. Now I do in fact have a paid account, but we can do all of these things that I'm going to show you with the free tier account. So the very first thing we're going to do is actually set up a compartment. And this is a really good first step to do anyway. If we go into identity and security, which is a lot of times where you're going to start your process. So with identity uh, and security here, you can set up users and groups. And for anybody who's done any kind of IT admin work, you know exactly what we're talking about here. This is access lists, right? This is making sure that you have the people you need and that they're in the groups that they need. Uh, you can also create dynamic groups. There are many ways that you can do policies, compartments, and all of these different things to create distributed network applications of all kinds that you can use uh, in cloud, on-prem, whatever. Uh, we have a wide variety of stuff, and you probably already know that already. And of course, a lot of this stuff is just kind of like basic. It's been around for over 20 years or more. So what we're going to do is first start with a compartment because really the compartments are kind of where everything kind of comes together. You can isolate a lot of your different uh, work with these different compartments. So you can put all sorts of things in a compartment, of course. So to create a compartment, I'm going to create one for, uh, let's say, Node.js testing. Right. Node.js testing. And there it is. So if we go into this, we can actually see uh, some information about this. Right now we don't have a whole lot. Um, you can rename it, edit it, that kind of thing. A compartment is really just sort of a way of creating a box around what you want to create. So now that we've created that compartment, um, you know, we give it a name, we give it a description, and of course a parent compartment of some kind. By the way, all of these things can be automated and we can use things like Terraform to create a lot of stuff. So that's also very cool. We're not going to get into that in this one, but now we want to install a Oracle Linux instance. So once we have our compartment, Node.js testing, we're actually going to go click up here on where it says Oracle Cloud. We're going to go back to our dashboard. Now I have a few things here that are, uh, maybe you don't see these things, but what we want to do is look for launch resources. And there's a bunch of basically wizards that are set up here for you to do things. So th some things are create a stack. Uh, you can set up an instance with developer tools, which will basically put in Oracle Linux 8 with the developer tools. A lot of things uh, that you would probably find. And that may include Node.js, but we really want to do a very simple, simple thing. So we're going to create a VM instance, and I'm just going to call it Node.js uh, test instance. And notice that I can switch compartments, but I'm going to keep it, of course, in my Node.js testing. We're not going to worry about availability right now, but you'll notice that we've got different images that we can choose here. The availability domains, by the way, will show you uh, when you're on free tier. They'll show you which ones are available for free tier. And for our free tier, we're actually just going to stick with Oracle Linux 8. Of course, it is Linux and it's uh, free and available on free tier. Now, the other thing that's nice is now you'll notice that uh, this AMD, while it is very nice, is more than we really need for something like Node.js and it's not free tier. However, the Ampere is always free eligible and you can come down here and you can adjust the memory and whatnot so we're actually going to crank it up to eight just because sometimes uh, we need eight gigs and then here's another really cool thing is that the wizard goes through you've got your os you've got your hardware uh, at least your virtual hardware. And now we're looking at our networking. So if I didn't already create a virtual cloud network, now I get a chance to create a new virtual cloud network in our compartment. We could also enter the subnet of an existing OCID, meaning maybe you've already created a whole system and you want to tie into that. But 
this is all very simple because now we can create our new VCN. Uh, we can create a new public subnet as well. And of course, we've got our CIDR block right there and we can assign a public IP4 address. Now, another thing that's important, of course, is that you save your private key. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and have it generate a, a key pair for you. You can, of course, create your own. Um, you can not use SSH, but we don't really recommend that. SSH is super handy and super reliable. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I wouldn't necessarily need in-transit encryption. It's automatically checked by default. Uh, but, you know, why not? I'm going to go ahead and uncheck it. Now let's create this compute instance, and it'll take it a minute or two to whirl away, and of course provision, and then stand up that instance. All right, instance access, and as you can see, the instance must be running before you can connect to it, so we'll just give it a pause here. And we're back, and as you can see, I am running here. I've got my Node.js test instance, and I've got all the information that I would need about it. I've got some metrics as well to see how it's performing. All of this stuff is really cool, but we need to make sure that we can actually get into the thing. So we are now going to create some ingress rules for our VCN. So we wanna go into our networking. And we want to look at our virtual cloud networks. Now, as you can see, this is the uh, VCN that we created in Node.js testing compartment. So we have our own compartment. And again, you can create a bunch of different compartments. They can all have their own VCNs. So we're going to go into here. And then if we click your subnet name in the subnet link, the default information is set up right here, of course. Now, we've got our default security list. And as you can see, this is pretty standard stuff right here. Now, obviously, we already have a uh, not stateless range right here that's going to allow for TCP. Uh, it's going to allow for SSH. So we can remote log in for right now. But there's some other things that we can't do, right? We do have ICMP enabled. Uh, but what we really want to be able to do is actually, you know, read and write information back and forth. So if we're creating a Node.js app, it could be doing all kinds of different things. So we just want to make sure that we can actually get in there. So for this one, we're going to make it stateless. For the uh, CIDR, we're going to have good old 0.0.0, .0 slash zero. Our IP protocol will be TCP IP. Our source port range, we will leave blank. And our destination port range, we're going to open it all the way up, 3000 right there. And uh, we are going to call this allow HTTP connections. Add our ingress rule, and we should be good to go. So we've successfully created an ingress rule that makes our instance available from the internet. Now, what else do we do? Well, we're going to create a Node Express application, so we want to install and set up Node Express. Of course, eventually we're going to SSH in here, so I've launched Terminal. Surprise. I'm going to go back over to my main panel here, and actually we're going to go into our instances. We're going to click through our instance here, and in the Instance Details page, which is where we are right now, look in the Instance Access, and as you can see, there is a public IP address. So we're going to copy that. Our username is OPC, so if you've done this before, you know that you're going to log in with your private key, and we're going to SSH in using that private key and OPC at our public IP address. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I would be remiss in uh, mentioning that you should, of course, protect your private key, so we're going to do that. There we go. And we are now in our Node.js instance. Okay, I want to make this a little bit bigger so that we can actually see what we're doing. So like I said, we SSH'd in. Now we're going to enable HTTP connection on port 3000. So once we're in here, we can sudo things. All right. And then we can... Bam. Now we're going to install the latest version of Node.js, and we make this really easy because there's actually a YUM repository right in Oracle Cloud, so we're just going to say
Yeah, sure, that's all good. And of course it'll work its little magic for a bit there. So now we're updating yum and then next we are going to install Node.js and we're going to check the version. All right, now that we have updated yum, we are going to use yum to install Node.js. And now that that's complete, let's check the version. Wonderful. Now we are going to make a directory for a little app. And we're going to go in there. And then we're going to use npm to create a package. And of course, we're going to use npm to create a package.json file. So the package name will be node hello app version 1.0 is fine. Description node express hello application. Our entry point is actually, now normally you'll see index.js, and I've got another uh, screencast I've been working on where we use that, but in this case, we're actually gonna use app.js, and then a test command, we're gonna leave blank. Uh, our git repository, we can put any git repository that we want to here, of course. We're gonna leave uh, the keywords blank. Now, again, that git repository, you're gonna wanna replace that with a valid git repository, uh, but in this case, I don't really have one. And, and then, of course, our author could be someone, you know, say victor at example.com. And our license in this case is going to be uh, UPL 1.0. Now, again, that just depends on what you're going to be using. And, uh, and as you can see, by the way, the scripts, there's nothing there right now. There's a test that just shows that there's no test available. And uh, everything else is pretty much minimal. Excellent. Now we're going to install Express. Now we want to see if Express was added as a dependency in our JSON package here. And it was. Look at that. And now we can create a hello world application. All right, and now we're going to create a, uh, we're gonna create a file called app.js. And I'm gonna use nano to go in here. Not everybody likes nano, but I do. And there we go. That's probably the simplest thing you'll ever see, or at least you may see today. And as you can see, really all we're doing is we're just creating a little something that will say, hello world app listening on port 3000. So let's write this out. And let's run it. Look at that.